We are definitely heading into an extended duration heat wave across the state of Texas with record high temperatures, triple digit heat, and some heat index values approaching 120 degrees over the next two weeks. Unfortunately, severe weather is also sticking around a bit longer than we expected, and that risk unfortunately does include today and Saturday. Let's talk about it in the Thursday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Good morning. It is Thursday, the 15th of June, 2023. Typically, we're well into our summer pattern by now, but alas, Mother Nature is decided to relocate May to June, and thus, yes, another risk for severe weather this afternoon into tonight. And it may end up being a bit of a doozy again, unfortunately, uh, with the potential for significant damaging straight line winds, the potential for yet another round of giant hail, and also, added to today's menu, the potential for a few tornadoes. We're going to be talking about that in detail here in a moment. But first, let's just head on over and get the temperature forecast out of the way over the next seven days. Look, it's June. Contrary to Mother Nature's belief that it's actually April or May with the jet stream overhead, it is still going to feel like June and summer as a whole, and temperatures are only going to be going up from here. High temperature forecasts over the next week across Texas will generally average upper 90s to about 110 degrees. On the extreme side, some folks may end up getting to stay in the mid-60s. Other folks may end up closer to 115 degrees in the actual air temperature. Add in humidity. For example, here's Monday's high temperature forecast. Add in the humidity, and most folks across the southeastern half of Texas, we're probably going to have heat index values of 108 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Tuesday, Wednesday, it stays hot. And again, these are just the air temperatures, and apparently central Arkansas has just decided it doesn't want to exist anymore. That's okay. But again, these are air temperatures. Add 5 to 15 degrees for the heat index values, and... Uh, yeah, it's not going to be fun, and this pattern looks like it's probably going to continue maybe through the end of June, at least. So, unfortunately, we're going from just typical, you know, it's warm and humid to holy guacamole, it's going to be nasty hot. Eerily similar to last summer, ironically, but hopefully we can go without four months of this. That's what would differentiate this from last summer. All right, let's deal with severe weather issues. Uh, here is the severe weather outlook for today, tonight, into Thursday morning. Uh, this has changed a bit. Uh, the upper level high pressure that looked like it was going to become dominant further north across Texas instead of just the southern half of Texas has delayed its appearance or at least its uh, increase in influence. So given the fact we still have a nasty jet stream overhead more reminiscent of April than mid-June, the fact that we have summertime temperatures, summertime moisture, uh, we've gone from what looked to be a relatively low-end risk level one to local level two all the way up to level four now across portions of the northeastern texas panhandle the eastern oklahoma panhandle a good portion of northwest oklahoma western oklahoma central oklahoma including oklahoma city under that level four out of five risk for intense severe thunderstorms this afternoon and evening have a good one brandy so you interrupt your videos to say bye bye to people because people matter Okay, so again, level 4 out of 5 risk. That means there is a 1 in 2 chance of severe weather occurring within 25 miles of any given point, like your home. Level 3 risk includes more of the northeastern Texas Panhandle and the Red River Valley in Texoma. Wichita Falls east to Sherman, Paris points north into southern Oklahoma. Depending on storms later today, it is entirely plausible that level 3 risk and the level 2 risk have to be extended further south, maybe even level 4 risk too. Level 2 risk, or let me rephrase this, level 3, that's about a 1 in 3 chance of severe storms within 25 miles of your location. Level 2 risk, that's about a 1 in 5 to a 1 in 6 chance of severe storms near your location. In the yellow, that does include the eastern big country, a good portion of north Texas into the northern hill country. Northeast Texas, the Arklatex, that level 1 in the green, that's about a 1 in 10 to a 1 in 20 chance for a severe storm within 25 miles of any given point. Today's most intense storms, especially in that level 3 and level 4 risk zone, the potential for a few tornadoes, 
baseball to softball and grapefruit size hail the potential for hurricane force winds of 75 to perhaps as high as 120 miles an hour now that risk for 100 to 120 mile an hour straight line winds will be highest in the level four risk but there is some data that suggests that may end up being more of an issue for the red river and again, when I say 100 to 120 mile an hour straight line winds, I am, yes, comparing that to that of a Category 3 hurricane or an EF2 tornado. It does not matter if the straight line, if the wind is coming at you in a straight line or rotating. The wind is wind, and some of these storms today will be capable of producing tornado like damage with straight line winds. In fact, in all likelihood, we may be dealing with a derecho which is a long-lived line of intense thunderstorms producing hurricane-force winds, typically over the span of several hundred miles. It is entirely possible that begins in the Oklahoma Panhandle late this afternoon, and it could continue all the way through portions of Oklahoma, northeast Texas, Louisiana, maybe all the way down to Mississippi by Friday afternoon. Perhaps. We'll see. We could also see scattered severe storms fire up east of a boundary slash dry line across western North Texas this afternoon with a threat of large to giant hail. Again, the potential for localized damaging winds, and we are going to have a bit more low-level winds here today, so the tornado threat also could increase. In fact, here's the tornado potential for today from the Storm Prediction Center. We'll refine this as well as we get into later today, but as a whole, the potential is there for a few tornadoes across portions of North Texas. Texoma, Northwest Texas and the Northeastern Texas Panhandle, but you can see right now they're highlighting a medium potential for a few tornadoes across Northwestern Oklahoma, the far Northeastern Texas Panhandle, the Eastern Oklahoma Panhandle. Again, we'll deal with this as... Well, the day evolves, and if the last week haven't taught you much, well, here's today's lesson. Mother Nature's going to do what, what Mother Nature's going to do. Weather models are good, and sometimes they're right. But unfortunately, given the very unusual pattern we're in right now with, you know, a March to April jet stream overhead, a very strong jet stream combined or juxtaposed, if you prefer a more Davis nerd word, with the June instability of summer, I mean, we got problems in the severe weather department, obviously. All right, I'm going to show you a couple different weather models for today and tonight into early Friday morning, just to show you how spread out some of this data is. It'll give you the opportunity to also see what we're working with and what solutions are on the table. This is the high-res rapid refresh model. Frankly, it hasn't done super great over the last several days. Sometimes it's right. Sometimes it's completely off, but here we go. It's got thunderstorms firing up by 3 to 4 p.m. in the northeastern Texas panhandle, the eastern Oklahoma panhandle, southwest Kansas. Those storms evolve into a cluster of intense thunderstorms with the potential for more isolated supercells also developing further southeast to the Red River in northwest Texas and Texoma by 6 p.m. Cluster of storms will move southeast, individual supercells more to the east. Individual supercells capable of producing softball size hail winds to 80 miles an hour. The potential is there for a few tornadoes. Cluster of severe storms that move southeast across western Oklahoma, central Oklahoma, and the northeast Texas tonight. The potential for hurricane force winds of 75 to over 100 mile an hour winds in the most intense segments of that. The potential for very large hail to continue given the extreme amounts of instability in place. The potential exists for, if this were to verify, for wind driven baseball size hail. The potential for spin up tornadoes to keep occurring. And the potential for widespread wind damage. All the way in a swath from near Woodward, Oklahoma to Oklahoma City to near, uh, at this point, Broken Bow, Oklahoma, and the Northeast Texas and the Arkla Tex, to be frank. And again, those individual supercells you see trying to ride the Red River, those would be problematic in pretty much every severe weather hazard way possible. All right, so that's the high res rapid refresh model. Here's the North American model. Notice how it has supercells firing east of the dry line in western North Texas after 3 to 4 p.m. this afternoon, moving into the Metroplex and Texoma and portions of northeast Texas this evening. You can see this doesn't really develop that super intense cluster of storms back over Oklahoma like the HER model did. This would be more of a holy guacamole softball-sized hailstorm event with the potential for a few tornadoes and localized damaging winds versus a derecho moving from northwest Oklahoma all the way to Mississippi. 
tonight into tomorrow morning. This is one plausibility, and this would obviously result in a more substantial severe weather threat for North Texas and Texoma this afternoon versus having to wait till tonight. And that's certainly on the table. And if that wasn't fun enough, here is another weather model. This is actually an experimental weather model that is uh, being designed to replace the high-rose rapid refresh or the HER model. This model generally, it seems, has been way overzealous with thunderstorms and convection this spring. But it might provide a realistic worst-case scenario for us today. In the sense that this thing pops supercells up all the way from... Uh, the eastern big country, into the hill country, into north Texas, into western Oklahoma through 7 p.m. this evening. Unfortunately, the end of this weather model runs at 7 p.m., but in all likelihood, we'd see a cluster of storms then attack northeast Texas tonight. If this were to verify, that would kind of look like the North American model in regards to supercells and pretty much dropping softball size hail, the potential for a few tornadoes, localized damaging winds across North Texas, Texoma after 4 p.m. this afternoon, and then Northeast Texas this evening, we'd have the potential for hurricane force winds, wind-driven baseball size hail, maybe spin up tornadoes as well. So again, and I mean, also the potential for more isolated storms all the way down to near Austin and Belton and Temple back to Colleen. And again, these are just a couple of the various possibilities we're dealing with today. So uh, it goes without saying that today's going to be a good day to remain weather aware if you are in pretty much the hill country all the way north into North Texas, Texoma, the Arklatex, into a good portion of Oklahoma. And again, probably what we're going to see happen here is a variation of one of the three solutions I just showed you. And honestly, we're just going to have to see what happens when it begins to unfold, but unfortunately, like I've said already, we're dealing with a situation where we could get really nasty hail, really nasty damaging winds, and compared to the last few days, we've also seen an uptick in low-level wind shear, so the potential for a few tornadoes is certainly there. I'm not saying this is going to be, you know, like an April tornado outbreak. I don't think we're going to see, you know, dozens of tornadoes out of this. But given the extreme instability, the extreme, for at least mid-June, unprecedented, frankly, amount of wind shear aloft, and at least some modest increase in low-level wind shear and juxtaposition with the extreme amounts of low-level instability, the tornado threat is certainly there today. We're going to have to be mindful of that. And then we go into Friday. Friday, the potential there for isolated severe storms in the northern Texas panhandle, maybe far northeast Texas. Honestly, Friday looks like more of a down day for severe storms, a hot day. But you know what? Maybe, maybe we can just get one day, one day without having softballs flying somewhere in the state of Texas. And if you were watching my video yesterday, you know, I pretty much said, hey, you know what? After tomorrow, it looks like we're going to be done with severe storms. I was wrong because, like I said, the high pressure is starting to take its sweet time getting here. So, unfortunately, let's go to Saturday. Saturday has gone from a 2A, oh, good, another significant threat for severe weather. Right now, the Storm Prediction Center has a level 2 out of 5 risk for severe storms across the eastern half of the Texas Panhandle, west central Texas, northwest Texas, Texoma portions of north Texas. With that level 1 risk all the way south through the big country, the Concho Valley, portions of central Texas, the Arklatex, and east Texas. Look, there's a good chance we're going to see higher risk levels introduced as we get closer. This has the potential to be a busy severe weather day, especially across portions of the Panhandle, northwest Texas, and Oklahoma. Storms on Saturday. Probably going to be dropping baseball to softball size hail, at least the most intense storms. Could see another day with damaging winds, 70 to 80 miles an hour, maybe over. And there could be a few tornadoes. The tornado risk is more uncertain. We're just going to have to see how that ends up evolving as we get closer. But we're probably going to be doing some severe weather coverage on Saturday and live storm chasing video. And if you can't tell, I'm kind of tired of it at this point. Look, I'm all for, you know, the whole we get rain, you know what, we get some severe storms in April and May. That's typical. But this is just ridiculous. And I'm tired of it. Unfortunately, Mother Nature doesn't care what I think, and Mother Nature is going to do what Mother Nature is going to do. So we're going to be here as long as we need to be here. We'll be talking about it, but I know the rest of y'all are wondering what the heck is going on with this severe weather 
in June. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, you might as well just pretend we're back in early May until this is over, because that's exactly how Mother Nature's behaving, which is absolutely absurd. But, hey, you know what? At least it's Thursday, which means tomorrow's Friday. Hopefully tomorrow will be a nicer day in the lack of, you know, softballs flying. Get through Saturday, and perhaps, perhaps, perhaps... We'll be done with it, and then it's going to be 105 to 115 degrees for like the next two weeks at least, without much in the way of rain chances, but that's how it goes sometimes. So we'll be keeping an eye on things here at the Texas Storm Chasers. We are going to have chasers out about today. Uh, we will have live severe weather coverage this afternoon into tonight, assuming the derecho... Well, we will have severe weather coverage, but also the part where the derecho is probably going to come and try and attack me and, you know, take out my ability to live stream, depending on the whole... Uh, infrastructure damage from widespread damaging winds and hopefully no hail comes flying through that window boy let me tell you that's not as easy as it looks when you're looking at a screen and have your bearings off you can keep an eye on the sky with the free texas storm chasers interactive weather radar on our website texasstormchasers.com or in the free texas storm chasers mobile app we'll probably be doing more of these video updates later this morning into early this afternoon from the almighty meteorologist jason cooley and then yours truly will be here for severe weather coverage later until I have to go hide in the closet because the derecho is trying to throw wind-driven softballs at my window next to me. You know, windows are nice to have at weather offices and all, but sometimes, especially when they're west-facing, the threat of wind-driven hail is kind of spooky. So, you all have a great Thursday. God bless. You'll be seeing more from us later today. Try to make it a good one and stay cool.